All right, so today we're going to be going over soft proofing, and it seems to be one of the most difficult things is for photographers to get accurate printing results. However, I should note, my monitor is calibrated. If your monitor is not calibrated, what you see on your screen might not be accurate as to what it actually looks like. So the first part of this process is to use something like Data Color or Color Monkey to calibrate your screen. All right, so we have soft proofing. So soft proofing is located up here under View. And to soft proof, you just basically are going to hit Command Y on a Mac or Control Y on a PC. And when you do that, you will instantly see the colors change. So this takes whatever profile you put into your system, which I'll show you how to do in a second, and rendering intent and a couple other factors and shows you what this should look like when printing. One of the problems, it's not really a problem, is you're able to see a whole lot more color or visible color and contrast than you can ever get out of a print or if you go on the web or if you go to an offset press. Your monitor, especially Retina, 5K, 4K, they just display a whole lot more color than you could ever get out of that final print. So what a soft print does is kind of show you what your finished image should look like. And this is important on a specific printer and paper. That's very important, specific printer and paper. When you load this stuff in, it is going to be specific to whatever paper or printer you're going to be using. So how do we tell the computer what we want to soft print? First, we're going to get out of this, so I'm going to hit Command Y. We're going to go up in here to View, and we're going to go over to Proof Setup. Now we have some just basics here. So if we want to go to our Work EMC MYK profile, if we want to do the Internet, Monitor RGB, hey, and if you want to see what it would look like when it's colorblind, that's pretty cool. So if you're colorblind, that's what this image would look like. We're going to go back up and we're going to hit custom. So custom's going to bring this image up. Right here, this is what we're using, a custom proof. And then the device we want to simulate. So in this case, we're going to print. Well, what do we want to simulate? What type of printer? So I'm going to go down here and look for... Epson, so let's say we're going to print on an Epson 4900 and we're using Bayarta paper. This PK, which is photo black. So we're going to select that. So this is our printer and this is our paper that we're going to be using. This is the color profile that you use to print on this printer and this paper. The next thing we have are our rendering intent. Now, I'm not going to get into rendering intent because I think it's too confusing for most people and they don't understand. Basically, when you, when you print, you're able to select your rendering intent. And what happens is you're going to have colors that are out of gamut, meaning that you cannot print them. Rendering intent converts those colors to printable colors. So it tries to make an adjustment and make it look as good as possible. There's a couple different types of rendering intents. I think two main ones that most people use. What you can do is select them and see how it's going to look. Now, the issue right here is we do not have soft proofing on. If you don't have preview selected, you won't see this. So if I come down here to saturation, you can see it changed. Relative color metric, it's going to change. And then absolute color metric. Absolute color metric you're never going to use. You're basically almost always going to be under perceptual and relative color metric. So you can go to perceptual and then you can go to relative color metric. Pick which one you think looks best. That's all that matters. Whichever one you think looks best is the one you should choose. But what's important here is we also have the ability to simulate the paper, meaning this paper up here, of what it's actually going to look like on that paper. Because right now we're just getting a simulation on our monitor of this profile, but not on this paper. The type of paper is going to change that. So if I come up here and click simulate paper color, it's automatically going to select that black point level. And we can see 
how it's changing that really look at these blacks over here right so anything that we see here is how this is actually going to look like or should look like when you print it and if it doesn't then you screwed something up somewhere else so right now we have this now i could save this let's say i use this paper every single day to print and i want to save this so it's quicker and easier to get to i can come down here and hit save and i will just call this epson 4900 and this was Bayarda. and i think relative color metric we'll use that and then hit save and hopefully that's what I just did yes so relative color metric so we'll hit OK and now whenever I want to use that all I have to do is come up here to view proof setup and then I've got this kind of default set and I'm ready to go so now I can hit Y or command Y and that's gonna that's how my print or my tone originally was and this is what it's going to look like on that specific paper. So the next step here, and this is obviously not something that you have to do, but once you have an image, and so what I've done here is notice I, this is our image, and this is in the soft proof because we can see the soft proof extension is here. And I've duplicated this image. This is the original image with this soft proof off. The way you do that is just layer duplicate and then here you would choose new so that's how you duplicate a layer we have this it does not have the soft proof on this is what the soft proof of what our image is going to look like now if you are happy with the way the image looks that's perfectly fine you can go ahead and print this it looks just like this but you can see in this image some of the colors are slightly different we've lost some of the contrast so you can also make an adjustment so I'm using a MacBook Pro to do this video I have a secondary screen so I'm going to be doing some of this work off screen but the pertinent stuff I will eventually drag over so you can see what I did remember this is our original image and I've selected this because this is what we want to make the adjustment on so I'm going to come over to my layers and I'm going to make an adjustment layer for curves and right down here we've got the curves adjustment layer and so if I want to get this contrast this contrast over here to look like this I can simply look at this image and make an adjustment now you can see we have a little bit more vibrant colors that is part of remember there's going to be some colors that aren't printable and so we can try to make them look like this but they're just not going to be printable what we're trying to do is get close it's getting a little flat in here when I did that so I'm not like totally happy about that but I can come in here and just increase that contrast a little bit so it's looking more like this over here now let's say I wanted to make this color a little bit different come over I can make another adjustment layer I can go to hue saturation and I can try to make this color, which is probably a blue. I can increase that saturation a little bit. It's a little bit purplish. And that's pretty good. So I've made, and I'll drag this over, two adjustment layers to basically try and match this to this. Now I'm going to select both of these. So I'm going to hold shift and select both layers and then I'm going to hit command G which is group so command G group and this is what's going to be called the print adjustment and this print adjustment is going to be for this paper so I could come in here and put 4900 I don't know how much room we have Arta relative color metric so that's this adjustment as I turn this on and off is trying to adjust or compensate 
for this. You can see we've gotten a little bit darker. I could come in there and make that area a little bit brighter. Whatever you want to do. But this adjustment is trying to make this print like, like our original tone. Unless we are happy with it off. It kind of depends on what you want to do. Now if you want to take this adjustment and apply it to another image like you had another image. You've already made the adjustment. So basically I could drag this file over to another image and that would be the print adjustment for that file. So hopefully this has been helpful. You learned a little bit about soft proofing. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below and don't forget to subscribe.